I have thought about what sustains me, and there are a lot of different aspects, different things that I do depending on what's happening. I mean, some of my favorite ways to sustain myself are by exercising. I go out and play tennis with partners. I used to do that a lot. And lately I've gotten much more busy with the Internet and clients and not as much time for the tennis or I'm not making as much time for it. So one of the things that sustains me is my wonderful health club because I do my working out. I started a group called Our Healthy Living and a Facebook group. And in that group, every time I work out, I post what I've done and people respond and it's kind of nice. So I'm also in another group, which is called Gold Guru, which is about walking 365 miles in a year. So I've been in it for three years. The first year, I thought I made the 365 miles, but I didn't because I was on a bike at the gym and it's kilometers. So it was less than that. So the second year, I almost made it. And in December, I was very short. So I was really doing a lot to just (laughs) barely make it by the end of December. So this year, starting January 1st, I started really gung-ho, working out a lot. I wanted to double, even triple it, but I couldn't sustain it. Then I had an injury and something hurt, and so I mellowed out, but I am going. And at this point, I have a little bit more than 150 miles since January 1st of working wow. out. So and you're, you're, uh, that feels... Very, uh, very on track. Right. That feels great. And there are many times where that just doesn't do it. I'm not in the mood to go there. Something hurts and I don't want to injure myself. So those are times when I like to go to a restaurant. You know, like when, like I've had clients and a lot going on with the internet and I'm stressed out and I'm not up for the gym. And then I just go somewhere. And if it's lunchtime, I would have coffee. All of that's not so healthy, but I have coffee with a nice meal. And if it's dinner time, I like to have a glass of wine when I'm in that stressed out state because that just feels soothing. And I sit there, maybe talk to a waiter or a waitress or someone for, you know, just to understand and have some kind of meal that's very satisfying. Mm. Sometimes it's comfort food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not always the most healthy, but I basically I have a pretty healthy diet. So when I'm in a more relaxed state and things are going well and I have enough time, I like to make a smoothie and eat healthy and really do it right. But when I'm rushed, that's sometimes hard. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's just one aspect of what I find sustains me. I love feeling like I'm doing something for my own health. So, so I want to maybe uh, repeat some of it, um, that there is, you know, I'm hearing something that uh, there's a sense of, in a way, modulation, because in general, you pay a lot of attention to your health in terms of exercise and in terms of food, and um, a sense that in a period of stress, you actually allow yourself something that's more comfortable, not as healthy, but comfortable, so that it's not, you know, kind of a rigid orientation, but something that can be modulated. And what I'm also hearing is that uh, in terms of exercise, that there is something that helps you uh, do it is, in a way, uh, one is having goals, so something specific, so that you have a sense of how you're doing, and uh, and and self accountability, and also a sense of connection with other people, uh, like the uh, Facebook groups, so that there is a social aspect of a supportive uh, presence of the group, you know, acknowledgement. Wow, I have never had all of that explained, and there's more <laughs> because one of the features at my health club that I absolutely love is that we have a jacuzzi, sauna, and steam in a little area. So it's like going to a spa. So that is also social for me very often because there are some other ladies that I've connected with many times where 
we just have a nice conversation about whatever's going on. It's not about business. We're not talking about work. Nobody's trying to sell me anything or enroll me in anything, and it's just calming. So the people are soothing and also the environment. I love going in the jacuzzi. I do some yoga in there and then relax in the sauna and the steam. So yeah. it's not just the working out. I get a reward from it. There is a small area, a workout room at the complex where I live, but I don't like the equipment that much, and it's not satisfying afterwards. Mm -hmm. Although I do have a swimming pool and an outdoor jacuzzi. So sometimes in the morning I will do a little qigong out on my terrace, looks out on a very pretty area right near the ocean also. And then I go swimming and use the jacuzzi. But I need the time for that in the morning. You know, it, it's a process, and but that feels wonderful too. With swimming, I discovered... You can't add up the miles very quickly. I, I think I, I did six laps or ten laps. doesn't add up to that many miles. But, mm -hmm. boy, it does so much for your body, the mm -hmm. movement and the stretching. Yeah, so so there's the, the enjoyment of the exercise itself, as in swimming, and there's uh, the fact that the setting – uh, and, Absolutely. you know, that beautiful place and having company, enjoyable company, uh, is part of making the exercise itself enjoyable and making it sustainable. That's true. Because if you just go to a gym and you're working and working and, and there's no satisfaction out of it, you're mm -hmm. usually not going to be able to sustain it. Yeah. And you mentioned something about the swimming and you say it's about, you know, the, or the Qigong in the morning and it's time. And in a way, um, for many people, uh, time is not having time is the big thing. You know, so, uh, how is it for you about making time, finding time to exercise? Uh, the first word that comes to me that I don't like is that it's not easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, the best I know in terms of health, probably the best time to work out is in the morning. Like if I would go out and go for a walk, the problem I have is that I have these goals and tasks that I want to do on the Internet, and it's so many distractions all day long that for me the best time is late at night. 10, 11, even midnight is when I'm getting things done on the Internet. So if I'm up late, I can't get up early to go out and exercise. It's just too much. It's burning the candle at both ends. So I usually work out later, around 6 or 7 o'clock at night. And I love going to my health club. And that's a time when around 7 o'clock it's less crowded there. So that's why I like to go at night. The mm -hmm. middle, the earlier hours get very crowded. So I'm used to going later in the evening. And that feels good. Did the whole day's work, and then I say enough, and go and do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so uh, in a way, it's like it not just exercise itself, but it's about managing your whole day uh, so that you find the place of exercise in the day. And for you, the way it works out is say around six or seven, so that you know your day is very active, and then it's a break. Right. And the other important part of it is to schedule it, mm -hmm. is as to know I am going to exercise, that if I don't do it today, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like once you say, I can't do it today because I'm too busy, then tomorrow comes and I'm too busy, and then the next day comes and I'm too busy. That's where having that group where I'm reporting what I'm doing and listing it, that's why that makes a difference. Because yeah. I can yeah. see, I didn't go four days already. I'm slipping behind, and I, it's just nobody's telling me I have to do it, but it feels good. I see it. Keeps you honest. That motivates. Keeps me honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the um, what does it feel like when a day where it's a little difficult to 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 go? Um, what do you notice inside? 
you know, like the the moment before going, the moment when you shift toward going, after you go? What's the experience? That's a great question. Um, sometimes I don't feel so great. Sometimes for, just from sitting or maybe because I worked out a day or two before, my thighs feel sore or my hips or something's not comfortable and I feel, oh, I don't know if I want to go, but it's not bad enough. And then I gather myself stuff up, my little routine of what I need and my water and I get going and then I'm fine. And then uh, another thing that sustains me is in the car, I have Sirius XM, and I started listening to the Sinatra, Seriously Sinatra Station. What I love about that station is that there are these amazing singers, a lot of jazz singers and popular singers from other eras, that like Ella Fitzgerald, that I never listened to years ago. I never knew the quality of their singing including Doris Day. She had this sweet voice that she was in these cutesy movies and you never thought of her as being a really great singer. And when I listen to her now, there are certain people that as soon as they come on, like Barbara Streisand, I know it's them. I mean, I know that voice and there's something different about it. There's a reason that, and Sammy Davis Jr., and Bobby Darren. These mm-hmm, are people mm-hmm. I never thought of them as so special. But now when I hear them, I may not realize right away who it is, but I always say, wow, I like that song, and that's one of those people. They mm-hmm. had a certain something, a feeling for the song. And, of course, Frank Sinatra, a lot of songs, he's like that. But that channel sustains me because I'm around Mm-hmm. What I feel is greatness. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's something about that music. So that that sense of surrounding with something, things that feel good. You know, including that kind of music. Right, and so some of it was before my era. It's not all in the time yeah. that were the people I listened to. I listened to folk music at the time. I mean, that's like. Uh, so maybe there's also I can't like. A sense of discovering something that you didn't know before. Right. And I have had that when I've turned to other channels, like one person talking about the theater, and they interview people and all the incredible abilities that they have in acting. That Mm -hmm. I found interesting, too. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it sustains me when I learn something new, Mm -hmm. learning from these people, discovering, and I like Mm -hmm. discovering greatness. People yeah. that are the tops in their field, like mm-hmm. the tennis um, matches, since I play tennis, watching those top players, it's so inspiring. Mm-hmm. So, you know, let's go back a little bit to that sense of, you know, when it feels like the transition. You were you were describing, you were starting to describe when it doesn't feel so great, and then you say, certainly it, start, you know, it starts feeling good, and even before you exercise, say you're in your car, and you have the music, and so when you have that music, uh, it feels like it's surrounding you and putting you into, oh, I'm in a good place, you know, and then, but let's go into, you know, in a way, where the shift from, I don't really want to go, to, okay, I'm going to, you know, what takes place? What what happens at that moment? Um, a lot of times it has to do with I'm doing something and then my mind is getting all scattered. I'm talking about on the Internet, mm-hmm. Internet a lot. It's like all scattered already. I'm, I'm not focusing. I'm not concentrating. So I know I have to stop that. And I could go, just go eat somewhere. But it's maybe, I don't, I ate late enough. I'm not starving, so mm-hmm. I can wait a little longer. So it's a decision. I mean, everything's a decision, and I just make the decision. Okay, I'm going there. And once you make the decision to do it, then it gets easier. Because then I have my routine. Then I'm in my habit. I go gather up what I need. I mm-hmm. get the water ready, get my key ready to lock the door, and then go in the car put the air conditioner on, put the music on, and then I'm headed there. That so, part's okay. So, so and the, a little more. Then I get to the health club, and 
that's where there's another decision of which equipment to go on because I find the bicycle is easy for me. And when I do the bike, I get gradually build up. To go mm-hmm. on an elliptical is a little harder to start. But then I ran into a problem with overdoing it with the bike because I use the arms back and forth. And in the solar plexus, I must have strained a muscle. So then I couldn't go on the bike as much. And so I said, okay, you're going to do a mile on the elliptical. And it was difficult, really difficult. And maybe the first time I didn't make it to a mile. But I found that even on the elliptical, I find that difficult. And at first, it's really like hard. The muscles are hard, but there's a point where your body, it gets like oiled or loosened up. And Mm -hmm. then I can keep going. Mm -hmm. And at the health club, what helps me, I don't use earphones. I could, but I just don't. I'm watching a lot of times the news. So it's not very good news, but it's my moment to catch up on what's happening, all the negative stuff in the world. (laughs) And the other thing, which is funny, that they have on these TVs is food channels where they're showing all this food while you're working out. (laughs) So, you know, there's these chef channels, you know, makes you hungry and want to go eat something. And most of them are not like real healthy meals. They're just attractive meals. So um, that part is good once I'm working out. And then I try to go further and further because I'm thinking of my miles. I want to do two or three miles, not just one mile. Mm -hmm. And I always have the reward in the back of my mind that after this is over, I'll be in the jacuzzi. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the very strong sense of the reward, both in terms of the goal, accomplishing the goal, and then the feeling good reward. Um, but what you were emphasizing at the beginning is that sense of this is a decision you make. You know, first a decision about, well, I may not really want to, but, you know, I'm going because I'm not that hungry. You know, I can. Or then at the health club, the decision, here's, I'm going to do this, you know, versus something else. So a sense of coming back on, you know, like your own experience and decision as opposed to what you need to do at the moment. Right. And there's another piece to this. I have an example of something yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm on, I'm on these four different love summits and for each one I've arranged to interview the promoter of the summit on my blog talk radio show. And also write an article or two about them. So last night I was writing an article about the summit that starts today, the Invincible to Irresistible Love Summit. And I wrote the article as a list at examiner.com where I am Miami Relationships Examiner. So I finished the whole article and it was not allowing me to save it because it didn't view it as really a list. They want step one, two, three, whatever. So it, I was spending so much time trying to save it, and then, then I learned to copy the whole thing, and I said, okay, I'm not making a list. I'm doing a regular article. So I was just determined that this software is not going to get the best of me. That magazine is not going to get the best of me and I'm going to get this article published. So I copied and pasted everything, the tags, whatever I needed to put in there. I copied it into a Microsoft Word document. I went out of that and started a regular article and you had to upload the image and everything. And anyway, I got it done. (laughs) <laughs> so, so, so I want to I want to to take the you know the phrase you use. You say I was determined that this software would not get the best of me. And as you're talking, you know, just I mean, you're usually animated and uh, very alive and move. But it felt like you were even specially animated, and I felt like your your arms were moving, you know, a little bit. So th- I get the sense of you being engaged. Like there is something that's an obstacle. And an obstacle becomes a challenge and you get very engaged in it and you're in that, you know, fight mode. I mean, in a, in a nice way. I don't mean fight in a. In no, it, it felt like that. Like yeah. I was fighting this software. Yeah. Okay. You're not going to let me make the list. I'm going to get this article done because right. 
my goal was bigger than the article. And and the so was to support the person running the summit and to write this article. And yeah, then it wasn't working. And so, so I get the sense, you know, that, and I, and I, and I link that to what, how you're describing what's happening with your exercising and, uh, that you're talking about the goals and you're talking about making the miles and, uh, uh, you know, so I have a sense that, uh, in a way, uh, in addition to simply exercise itself, there is something in challenges where, uh, you know, that, you know, the problem comes in and it becomes, oh, good, and you engage in it. You know, you kind of go and meet it, and there's something that pulls you in. I mean, is there is that a fair description of? Absolutely. I have, I love challenges. I never realized how much, but I actually wrote a novel, my novel, Love in the Blizzard of Life. I'll just show you this. <laughs> I wrote this. Uh, I know it's an audio, but I, I wrote this novel as part of a 30-day challenge in NaNoWriMo, National November Writers' Month. It's an international organization where they encourage people to write 50,000 words or more of a novel in the month of November. So they do this every November. Hmm. And so I joined it, and beforehand there was a meetup you could find a group to meet in your local area. And so I met with them. They were all much younger than me. They were like early 20s, adorable. And they gave us this little commitment thing to sign. It was adorable. And that just, it was a challenge. I said, well, I'll start writing it. I didn't know if I would do it. And then as I started, I was doing it every day. And then you go into the site and it has a graph showing you how far you're coming, how that compares to what other people are doing. And I ended up writing more than 100,000 words. Wow. And I completed the whole novel, and then I got it published. And so that was one challenge. I did another challenge, uh, 100 articles in 100 days for e articles. And it started out not bad. I was writing, but it started to get difficult. But when I'm in a challenge and I'm determined, I, the goal is to just keep going. You know what your goal was. Then I did something called a 100-day challenge, which is just a challenge for excellence, where every day you're watching a video about another aspect of being excellent and becoming excellent. And I loved that. And mm-hmm. I, I've done a few more things. I did a 30-day blogging challenge. That one I didn't like so much because – I take more time with my blogs and to push myself to write one every day. Some of them weren't as as inspired as they might have been. (laughs) So uh, just in that particular one, I wasn't as happy, but I did it. You know, Mm -hmm. I wrote the 30 blogs. So that all of that inspired me to create my own challenge, which is coming up soon. It's not quite ready yet. It's called the 30 day love challenge. And the goal is for the listeners or the participants to focus on love every single day with a different aspect and a different task. Just love in your life, creating love for yourself and for others. And by mm. focusing on it and having that goal, it, it changes your life. I already found just by organizing this and writing it, I found myself reaching out and being friendlier to waiters and waitresses and people in different places where I might have not been as friendly. But -hmm. because I'm thinking like that, I'm being more friendly and open and asking them more about themselves. So so there's that aspect of connection that comes in the very specific example about, uh, you know, just having the opportunity to connect more with people. uh, And also, but something that's very intertwined with the notion of challenge when you mentioned uh, how, uh, you know, even for the writing that what was helpful was not just a challenge by itself, but that there was a social aspect of people in a group coming and, uh, and, and comparing efforts and, and that sense of being supported by being in the group. Yes. And even at the end, they had an ending meetup if you wanted to come. And I came to that also. That helped me because there were a couple of real people, uh, a real college and a real person that I put into the novel and they recommended 
not having something real in the middle of a novel. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I changed the name of it to make it, you know, I made up a name. I checked all the colleges around <laughs> the country that were listed and made sure it wasn't a name that any of them had and that kind of thing. There was a little hint and that was helpful. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. And it was a closure to be with that group at the end. You're mm-hmm. right that, that that group feeling made a difference. Yeah, yeah. So we've talked about a bunch of things that, you know, help you go beyond your limitations, you know, go beyond, uh, you know, the, the day-to-day, go do more, uh, expand, and, uh, and you really literally rise to the challenge. What happens in those moments we all have uh, when, uh, you know, you're feeling down or not as, uh, you know, just uh, kind of not engaged or what? what's it like? It can feel really bad, except I'm so familiar with ups and downs over the years that at this point I know, and I remember someone telling me that in a Rubenfeld Synergy session when I was on the table, this is just temporary. So whenever I feel really lost, like malware in all of my websites, or the hard drive failed on my computer, or I had a recent incident, um, an issue with somebody where we were pretty angry at each other and you know, and then I said, here I'm teaching about love and look what I'm feeling and look what I'm making mm-hmm. that person feel. And I felt so bad. And then I stop and I say, well, how can I make it better? What can I do? At first I get into the negativity. You know, why is this happening? I'm getting stuck. And it's okay to feel whatever you're feeling and express it, like at least for a little while. Let yourself feel that way. Sometimes I go out and have mashed potatoes and fried chicken and things that they know probably aren't so healthy, you know, and I just do it and it's soothing and I feel a little better, although maybe I don't feel so much better afterwards. But, no, that helps sometimes. That's why it's called comfort food. So mm-hmm. sometimes I'll reach out for that. I used to call up a friend and complain and, you know, and discuss it a lot. I don't do that as much. Now I, I sit with it. I feel upset, I feel the frustration, and hopefully if it's about a person, I get to speak to the person, and I did that recently, we cleared up the air, and it's wonderful. So we went through the emotion, then cleared it up through talking, through really talking openly and honestly. And if it's an issue with the computer, like the malware thing, I managed to discover that first I reached out to people that I knew who were techies that could help me, but then they had to deal with that same hosting service that wasn't providing anything, and she she couldn't even get in to fix the thing, and it was going to be hours and hours and very expensive. And that's when I discovered Bluehost, my other hosting service, provided something called Site Doctor, and they go in and clean it out. So there was a solution. I found the solution, and that's why when I'm in the middle of it now, I say to myself, there will be a solution. This is temporary. I can find a way out of it. Just calm down. That's when I might say, forget it, close the computer, go to the health club, or go out somewhere, go do some chores. That's another thing I found. Once in a while, just doing chores, like my bills pile up. So instead of focusing on anything, I just go take all the bills out, spread them out, file them. That clears my mind. Mm -hmm. Just a simple chore. Yeah, or yeah, going yeah. out to the post office and the bank and just doing a few things, shopping for food, and then come back with a new attitude. And sometimes right. the solution comes because I did all of that. So, so you know, that sense of this too shall pass and that um, if you get, you know, that's in a way the exact <laughs> opposite of what we were talking about before of being engaged when there is a challenge. Uh, but the sense of this is actually a moment to disengage um, because if you stay there from that place, nothing good can happen. So the disengage and then rest and then, in a way, the the trust that as you disengage, you can come back fresh. Uh, and, uh, and this will also work out. <coughs> the challenge that you explained it so well 
the challenge works when I have a goal and I see the goal and I'm going toward it and maybe there's an obstacle. But the other is when I didn't expect that. Maybe I feel blindsided by something, like suddenly getting a notice that uh, the hard drive is failing on the computer. I wasn't expecting that. I was planning to watch these webinars and create some webinars and go forward. And all of a sudden, I have to go backward. <coughs> so that's the time to disengage. Yeah. Step yeah. back and take a look at what are the options, mm-hmm. what's mm-hmm. going on, and what are the options. And so so maybe the you know, just as important as that capacity to engage is the knowing that there are times where it's better to disengage. And that works with people, with projects, <laughs> even with exercising and health. Yeah, good, good. So is this a good place to bookmark to, to kind of end uh, our conversation, or is there something that you would like to add? The other piece that sustains me is having a sense of myself as a spiritual being. Mm-hmm. And that overlays a lot of it when I get caught up. Do you want to say a few words about about what that sense of yourself as a spiritual being feels like? It feels that I have, I was given unique gifts on this planet that are just mine based on my childhood, my family, my natural abilities, my way of thinking, and that I can what I am and who I am is a gift to people. So I'm on a different path from anyone else. So I have to not compare. And in those moments when I'm comparing and feeling I'm not getting ahead, to stop and to say, no, I'm doing okay. I have a goal. I have a purpose. And right now something seems to be in the way and maybe that's part of what I need to go through in order to be ready to do what I have to do. It just calms me down. Mm -hmm. So in a way, again, something that could be uh, a little different from what we were talking about before with the challenges, the goals, and so on, but in in that sense, a corrective of saying that you are who you are. And so you're not, you know, goals that are, you know, if you're not on a track for something, it may be that actually it's not something, the goal that's meant for you. And a bit of um, uh, taking some distance from it to say it may not be me. And uh, is that? Yes, it may not be meant for me. I'm trying to do something that's a struggle, and maybe I have to go in some other direction. So, again, it's st- stepping back and acknowledging who I am, appreciating who I am, and you know, and going where it does feel right, yeah, letting myself yeah. be guided, guided toward what feels right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great. great. Thanks, Erica. This is part of the Active Pause podcast at activepause.com.